Now we're going to move to the fascial fitness routine. Some people call it a connective tissue uh, routine. The point of it is to stimulate the production of crimped collagen, which is what our connective tissue is made of. All right. So there's two rules to this. One rule, one rule is that you need to create a, a slow, dynamic stretch. The second rule is you also have to create a fast, dynamic stretch. All right, so those two components are what we're looking to uh, accomplish here. So we're going to work on the anterior spring system first, okay? It's really the, the abdom mostly at the abdominal fascia, but it's called the anterior spring system. The first thing I'm going to show you is the, the, the slow, dynamic stretch. Okay, now remember that word dynamic means it's moving. There's no, there's no stationary anything here. It's all movement. Okay? So in the beginning, the first thing I want to do is I want to concentrate on either the upper portion or the lower portion of this anterior spring system. So what I'm going to do is hip hinge from the upper body. Okay? And I'm going to work the upper portion of the anterior spring system. Got to start by creating a pre-stretch. That's as long as I can possibly get. All right? Now, the pre-stretch happens and then a contraction. And the contraction is to throw your arms just a little bit like that and come up to this position. We're going to keep our rib cage and our pelvis as far away from each other as we can. All right? So we're going to go pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. And on the pre-stretch, I'm tapping my hands on the floor behind my head. That's getting as much, as much pre-tension as I possibly can from this neutral position. All right? And that, even though that might look like it's fast to you, this is considered the slow, dynamic stretch. Okay? Now, what we do to shift to make it a fast dynamic stretch, and, and there's another name for that, it's also called soft bouncing. All right? So what we do is we're still going to pre-tension and we're still going to contract, but they're going to be much quicker and much less range of motion. All right? So basically what that looks like is pre-stretch contract, pre-stretch contract, back. Real quick, can't even say the words fast enough. But I'm only sitting up to about maybe 30 degrees. That's the contraction, pre-stretch, contract. And you get going, you just get going faster. You gotta get a little rhythm going. Okay? That's the soft bouncing or the fast dynamic stretch. Okay? So what we just accomplished was hip hinging from the upper body working on that anterior spring system. So now we're going to hip hinge from the lower body. All right? I'm going to spin around so you guys can see what's going on here. Okay? Now when, I, when I'm working from the lower body, since my arms aren't as heavy as my legs, I can't stabilize them as easily, so I hold hand weights. All right? I hold them out like this. So I'm just going to mimic what I just showed you, a bilateral hip hinge. Okay, on the first one I always bend my knees just to kind of protect my low back, but it looks, but it looks like this. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. See how I'm pushing my hands away from my head? Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. I know, I'm too close. Ready? I'll move this way. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. Stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. This is the slow dynamic stretch. Hip hinging from the lower body, working on the anterior spring system. Okay? Now we want to move that into 
the fast dynamic stretch or the slow bouncing. And really all it is is this. You can hardly see the movement. Okay, but the whole thing is happening because I'm pushing as hard as I can. My hands are pushing these weights away. If you want to make it a little bit better, you can take a breath and hold it. All right. That's the fast dynamic stretch. Okay, hip hinging from our lower body. Working on the anterior spring system. All right. So those two, those first two patterns, obviously they were bilateral. Uh, and when we typically, I don't know too many people who can walk bilaterally. So we gotta shift this now into an alternating pattern that's gonna match up with our gait pattern, okay? So I'm going to use this position again, okay? It's just an alternating leg pattern. So now, maybe on the first one, I'm still going to bend my knees just to protect my low back as I start, right? But then I'm going to, it's like this. The long dynamic stretch, but now it's alternating. And this doesn't look like very much, but you got to remember that you're really pushing your hands away from you to create a stretch through that abdominal fascia. All right, this is the slow dynamic stretch, hip hinging from the low body, and we're working on the anterior spring system. Okay? Okay, so I'm sure you can guess what the fast dynamic stretch for this pattern looks like, right? All depends on how hard you're pushing away. And it also helps if you want to take a breath and hold it while you're doing this. That, that uh, even makes it better. Okay, so. That's all it is. But if you're doing it right, you're going to feel, you're going to feel all the tension. Pre-stretch and contract, pre-stretch and contract, okay? All right, so that's the anterior spring system. We worked it bilaterally from, from the upper, hip hinging from the upper body bilaterally, hip hinging from the lower body, all right? Then we went in and we uh, hip hinged from the lower body with an alternating pattern, all right? And that pretty much takes care of the, the anterior spring system. Okay, now I'm doing this for, for the camera. When I do this, I probably do 20 repetitions of each thing. And I, I think that works pretty good. In the beginning, that might seem like a lot. It might, this, this might feel like a little bit of a fitness routine. It's not. It's a movement routine and you'll, you'll pick up on it. You'll, you'll adapt to it very quickly. Okay? All right. So now, I'm going to shift to the lateral, sometimes Dalt calls it a lateral spring system. You know, it's, a, it's the lateral line, gets into the stirrup spring system, okay? But anyway, to do this one, you're going to, let me get these out of the way. We're going to take a sideline position, okay? Here's the sideline position. Now the easiest way to do this is just bring your, the knee on your bottom leg forward, okay? And what that allows is that allows that, that foot to go farther down. And as it goes farther down like that, it, it, that's what helps create the stretch from your hip down to, down to your foot. The other stretch is going to be here, like this. Okay? And as I do that, can you see my rib cage lift up? As I do that, that's telling me that I got a great pre-stretch for this movement pattern. So I'm going to pre-stretch, and the contraction is just hip adduction, and you try to sit up sideways. That's a lateral crunch. You're not really going to try. You're not really going to sit up. 
It's just the, the contraction after the pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract. That's the slow, dynamic stretch. There are 20 of those. Now you want to move that into a fast dynamic or slow bouncing pattern. It looks like this. Okay? Now I know this looks to you like my hand and foot are going just up and down, but I'm reaching with my toe and I'm reaching with my fingers at the same time. And you just got to get into a little rhythm like this. Okay? There's a rhythm. Get 20 of each, 20 of the fast dynamic, 20 of the slow dynamic. Roll over, you got the same pattern, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, you got to reach, contract, pre-stretch, contract, you got to reach, contract, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract. That's the slow dynamic on the other side, it moves into a Slow, but a soft bouncing or the fast dynamic stretch. Again, the key is, isn't to do up, go up and down. This is going up and down like this. You got to stretch, reach. Okay? There's the fast dynamic stretch. All right? I'll show you that from the, from the side. Starting position. Ready? And it's a pre-stretch. When you're up, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract. All right? You get 20 of those. Then here's the fast dynamic or the slow bouncing piece. And I'm reaching. I'm reaching my foot toward the wall and I'm reaching my hand over my head. I know it looks like I'm going up and down, and there is some up and down motion, but there's a length, a stretch, along the whole side of my body, all right? There it is there. Starting position, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract. Pre-stretch, contract, pre-stretch, contract. That's the, the slow dynamic stretch. There's the fast dynamic stretch. Soft bouncing. It's not just up and down. There's a big reach. My toes reaching from my lower body. My hands reaching away. Okay? There it is. Okay. That's a slow, slow dynamic stretch, fast dynamic stretch of the lateral. Sometimes I call it the lateral spring system. Sometimes I think it's it's uh, ties right in with a stirrup spring system. It's it's part of Dalton's work. All right. Okay. So now all we got to do is we got the anterior. We got the lateral piece. Now there's just a posterior piece. Posterior piece doesn't have as much of a range of motion. It's just because of the positioning. We're laying flat uh, on this mat. I'm going to show you a, 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 later on I'm going to show you how to do this over a BOSU ball. But I'm just going to show you the, the pattern from the neutral position. Right? We're going to extend Okay, that's all it is. Extension. You got to reach with your hands. That shoulder's going into extension. You lift your head up. Try to lift your chest up off. You see, I'm not doing anything with my legs though. Just using my upper body. This is the slow dynamic stretch for the posterior spring system. Okay? Now I'm going to drop down to the lower body piece, and you're going to see I'm not lifting my upper body up. There's not much range of motion. 
I hold my hands up to keep a little bit of contraction. That's the motion right there. Your knees maybe get an inch or so off. But you'll feel the contraction in your glutes, hamstrings, and low back. Okay? But that's the slow dynamic stretch. The fast dynamic stretch is a little bit... Uh, you need to develop some coordination to do it. But what it looks like is you're just going to... Slow bounce, uh, soft bounce like this. Okay. That's the posterior spring system. And that's all, that's all we need to work. And that's all, all I think that we need to work. Because those are the three spring systems that are uh, engaged in our gait pattern. Okay? All right. So... That motion that you saw there, whether it was this, like this, or this here, okay, or this here, that's called an oscillating motion, all right? We're moving through a range of motion to the end of that range of motion and we stop, it's a hard stop. And that, that absorbs the energy and catapults you in the opposite direction. That's the mechanism for restoring crimped collagen in our connective tissue, all right? Oscillating, oscillating movement patterns. Okay. So the next piece of this, we're going to work on three, and if you're, going to, you're going to see even more in terms of the oscillating pattern, all right? Okay, the first pattern, here's how you're going to start. You're going to start right in the quadruped position, okay? You got to bring your knees right together, and then you cross one leg, one ankle over the other. And I'm going to show you this from the front, but I got to show you from the back too, okay? And what you do is you start to wag your feet, and this just goes up your legs, and you start to side bend in your low back, left and right, okay? You can see that my head and shoulders are kind of going opposite, okay? I, I don't mean opposite. My head side bends to the right as my heels swing to the right. My head side bends to the left as my heels swing to the left. Because it's just, it's this muscle right in here. We're going like this. But what we're doing is we're creating an oscillating pattern in our lumbar spine and in the quadratus lumborum muscles here, okay? So anyway, here it is, just like this, right? Now, you don't want to leave your legs crossed over the same foot over for the whole time, so you switch it around. Make sure you're keeping your knees together, okay? That's what it looks like from the front. That's what it looks like from the back, okay? Cross one foot over, your feet are off the ground, your knees are right together to create a, a single fulcrum. And you wag like this. Okay. Now you can you start out kind of slow, and if you, if you feel something that, that something's painful, you better stop. But if there's no pain, then you can increase the aggressiveness of how you're wagging like this, right? I want to switch my feet and I really am wagging pretty good, okay? This is an awesome oscillating pattern. Alright, that's the first one. You try this, you're not going to believe how you feel after you, after you do it. 
Okay, the second oscillating pattern, that was a side bending oscillation, all right? So now I'm going to get into more of a, 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 a rotational pattern. And it really ties right back into the hip and shoulder counter rotation. But to do that, I grab a hand weight. And now I'm going to start on my back, like this, okay? The fulcrum is, is your heels now. You're going to still keep them right together. If my shoulders swing to the right, my hips are going to swing to the left. you got to keep your arms straight, okay? And the weight just helps to hit the end of that range of motion and catapults you back the other way. Okay? So you're like this. Now we've, we've switched from the frontal plane to the transverse plane. Okay? Looks like this. Alright? If you feel pain, don't do it. As you warm up though, you can, see I can get, you're going to get you, the side of your leg is right down on the floor almost. And that's as far as a two-armed uh, left shoulder rotation. That's as far as I can reach right there. That's the end of the range of motion. The stretch or the tension is absorbed and then catapulted back the other way. And again, that's the, that's the mechanism that's stimulating crimped collagen to be formed, okay? Just like this. Now there's one more. What you do for that one is, you gotta get your feet apart, you know, about shoulder width, maybe a little bit wider. It's gonna be look very similar, but now we're really working on the hip joint capsule and the connective tissue around that joint capsule. So, my knees go to the right, my hips go to the right, arms to my upper body goes to the left. Now you create another oscillating pattern, like this, okay? Yeah, if it hurts, if you're feeling pain, you got to stop. As you get warmed up, you can be a little more aggressive with how hard you swing, how hard you stop, and move in the opposite direction, all right? Anyway. As you can see, this is a great core workout, <laughs> too, all right? It's just not the typical crunches and sit-ups. Okay, so that, those routines right there, those six things, make up the, uh, the fascial fitness or the connective tissue restoration uh, movement routine, all right? It'll take you a little while to get used to the movement pattern, but... Uh, you, you just, you can't believe how good you feel when you get done with this. And after you do this for a while, your, your connective tissue is really going to become more springy. Absolutely. All right. Give it a try.